Welcome to the Biohacking Superhuman Performance Podcast. My name is Natalie Nidham. I'm a nutritionist, a human potential, and epigenetic coach, and I created this podcast to bring you the latest ways to take control of your health and longevity. We cover it all, from new technology to ancestral health practices, personalized interventions, and a very special interest of mine, peptides. Enjoy the show. Welcome back, folks. Today's episode is a bit of a departure from um, some of the recent episodes we've published. We are talking about skin, and we're talking about a product to help to turn the clock back on the age of your skin. I think that's a pretty good goal, personally. The product we're talking about, the claim, is to improve the health span of your skin. So my guest today is Carolina Race Oliveira. And Carolina is no lightweight. She's a, She's got a PhD in immunology. She is the CEO and co-founder of the company One Skin, which is marketing a proprietary peptide cream called OS1, which I have been using now for 30 days. Um, And I would say that my skin's never been this hydrated, at least at at the get-go. But let's talk about Carolina, not my skin. So Carolina is an alumnus of um, IndieBio, which is the world's leading biotech accelerator. Uh, She started off her career in Brazil. And then in 2016, she relocated to Silicon Valley to co-found One Skin with her three co-founders, all of whom are scientists. So all four of these women are scientists. We're talking about the white lab code, people in the lab, um, and they're totally breaking barriers here. They um, they joined up in Silicon Valley and they created a company whose goal is to, to lead disruptive rejuvenation technologies. So these ladies are just getting started. They're just getting warmed up. OS1 is but the first of what I think is going to be a lot of really interesting products we're going to see coming up, coming out of their labs. Um, and it's a this one's great. I mean, the cream itself is amazing. It's very light. It has no fragrance. And as far as I can tell, it sure works. So we talk about how she came to do what she does. We talk about the product, the science behind it. And this is what's amazing about this product also is there is so much research and science behind it. So... I hope you'll find this as fascinating as I did. I think, like I said before, I think we're going to see some great things coming from these guys. So if you decide that you want to give One Skin a try yourself, you can go to oneskin.com and use promo code superhuman1515 and you will get 15% off your first purchase. And superhuman is all caps. Okay. So I'm pretty sure it's... um, it's case sensitive. So you're going to want to be pay attention to that. If you're looking to get more information, you can go to oneskin.com. You can also follow them on Instagram. They've got a great Instagram feed, always posting really cool science, really cool information about this whole sector. If you get value from this podcast, please make sure that you share it with your friends, your family, your networks. This is what helps us to reach more people and get the word out right? If you're looking to connect with me, uh, you can find me on my website, natnidham.com. You can find me on Facebook in the Optimizing Superhuman Performance Group. You can find me on Instagram, which is just my name, Natalie Nidham. And if you want to watch this, if you're actually listening to it and you would actually like to watch it, you want to see what Carolina looks like, or you might want to see what's my skin looking like after 30 days of this stuff. Um, You can watch on YouTube at my, on my YouTube channel, which is also Natalie Nidham uh, with a banner that's biohacking superhuman performance at the top. So thank you. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate you guys. Please keep the comments, the questions, everything coming, because I love hearing from you because this is how I know um, what kind of guests you like to hear, what things you want to learn about all that kind of stuff. So Have an amazing day and enjoy the episode. Hey folks, just one thing before we get into the episode, and that is a word about our podcast sponsor this week, and that is Primadine, made by Oxford Healthspan, which is the brainchild of my good friend, Leslie Kenny. Primadine is an incredible source of spermidine. Spermidine is one of the most incredible supplements that I have come across in a long time. It addresses six of the nine hallmarks of aging. And this particular spermidine product is incredible for a bunch of different reasons. One, it's super clean. There's nothing but spermidine and prebiotics that will support your body's own production of spermidine in the capsule. 
It is a high quality wheat germ extract. And what they've done to make sure that it doesn't go rancid and go bad is they've defatted it. They've removed all the fat, all those delicate omega-6 oils that can be good for you in certain contexts, but once they go rancid and they go rancid very quickly, it's anything but good for you. So Primadine addresses six of the nine hallmarks of aging folks. Everything from the proper folding of proteins to autophagy, to cellular communication, the proper um, DNA protection. Uh, uh, did I say autophagy? Anyway, six different hallmarks. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you can go look for a couple of posts I've written about spermidine and you will see why this is a supplement that I include in my stack every single day. And frankly, it is part of the foundation stack for every one of my clients. So if you decide you want to give Primadine a try for yourself, you're going to want to go to primadine.com and use promo code BIONAT1515 and you will get 15% off your supplement. And the last thing I'm going to leave you with is that not only is Primadine doing all this incredible work under the hood to keep you healthy and rejuvenate your body and keep you youthful and vital. But on top of that, you're going to see it on the inside because you're going to grow stronger nails, better skin, and thicker, better hair. It is actually quite the most amazing thing. I've never really, I haven't seen too many supplements where I've gotten so much positive feedback from my clients and from my group followers. So by all means, if you haven't given this stuff a try yet, you must, uh, but you will know that it will take a good month or two before you start to see the effects and the benefits. So if you get it, if this resonates for you, give it a shot. You won't be sorry. And now enjoy the episode. Hey folks, just a little bit of housekeeping before we launch into the episode. Please remember that all of the information provided in these podcasts is for information purposes only. We are never offering treatments, cures, whatever for any kind of disease or medical condition. Anything you hear about here is going to be intriguing. There's some research around it, but make sure that you check with your medical provider before you go off and do any of this stuff for yourself. All right. So enjoy the episode. And also if you're looking to connect with me for any reason, with your comments, questions, whatever it may be, you can reach me through my website, which is natnidham.com, or you can find me on Facebook in the Optimizing Superhuman Performance Group, or on MeWe in the Biohacking Superhuman Performance Group. And of course, you can also follow me on Instagram, which is at Natalie Nidham. Natalie is with an H between the T and the A, the second A. So thank you so much for being here. Appreciate you guys. Enjoy the episode. Welcome to the show, Carolina de Oliveira. It is such a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much, Natalie. It's great to be here. Yeah, well, it's, uh, I'm, you know, it's funny, like the podcast, as people know, is it's, you know, it's this biohacking superhuman performance podcast. So we're all interested in longevity and health and living a long time. And then you realize one day you're like, well, wait a minute, if I'm going to live until I'm 100 or 110 or 120, I don't want to look like a raisin. Like, <laughs> it would be good. <laughs> Right. <laughs> right. And so what and and, you know, what can we do to keep ourselves looking good without hopefully without going too crazy on very, you know, on interventions that can be short lived or, well, expensive, very intrusive and maybe short sighted. Right. Maybe not so good in the long run. So. So when you guys reached out to me, I was like, yeah, I'm down. Plus you have the magic word peptide as part of your right. Product. Yes. <laughs> and I'm always interested in what can peptide, what more can peptide do for us? So Carolina, why don't you tell us a little bit about you and, um, and your company? Because you're four women and from the looks of it, four young women who've really kind of taken a stand in this anti-aging skincare product and, you know, and not just anti-aging, like we'll get rid of your wrinkles. Like you're using big words like senolytics and comparing to rapamycin, which are like some really heavy hitting concepts in skincare. So why don't, first of all, tell us about you guys and what made, I mean, very accomplished, but relatively young women kind of step into the space. <laughs> yes, Sure. Uh, so my background, I have a PhD in stem cell biology and tissue engineering, 
and some of our, my co-founders as well. Uh, Alessandra, her PhD was in skin regeneration. Mariana has a PhD in genomics. Uh, so we all got together because we had this <clears throat> desire of translating the science that we were, you know, researching for so many years in academia and, you know, transform this in a product that would impact people's lives. And we came here to the U.S. in 2016 to join IndieBio, that's a biotech accelerator. And initially, our main focus was to grow human skins in the lab to replace animal testing. So this was a worldwide trend in terms of how we can be more ethical and have models that are more representative of, you know, the human skin that testing animals or like, you know, mice that are, you know, their skin are not similar to ours. No, they're mice. They have fur. Right? Exactly. <laughs> you have to shave and their little backs to see what's I happening. I know. Yes. It's yes. sad. Yeah. Mice is, is a terrible model for, you know, skin research. Uh, and then, you know, growing human skin is something that, you know, uh, was already developed, so we, we decided to uh, to offer this. But eventually, here we realized that uh, other companies was uh, they were already focused on this area. So we decided to develop something very unique that no one was really doing. And what we saw is that this anti-aging market it's a massive market. Obviously, it's only gonna grow with you know the population getting older, but people still don't know which products they can trust, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's still right. like a gray area. That, you know, unfortunately, there is still a lot of you know hype and you know a, a lot of snake oil uh, out there. Yeah. So we we set out to develop a methodology to validate the efficacy of those products. So. Since we could grow human skins in the lab, we thought if we can measure the age of those tissues, when we test, when we apply a product, we can see if that product's really changing the age, the biological age of the skin. So we decided to initially, we were using Harvest molecular clock. You guys are familiar with the molecular clocks is how you measure yeah. the biological age through the methylation, yeah. the epigenetic profile. And eventually we developed a skin specific uh, molecular clock because uh, tissue specific molecular clocks, they are more accurate. Our epigenetic, it varies, you know, the pattern varies um, according to the tissue. So one, we developed one that was based only on skin samples. So that means that we could, you know, grow a skin and measure, okay, this skin is like 45 years old, and then we could test any product and see, if, and see if that product would reduce, you know, the age to 40, 43, 40, or if it would accelerate aging, you know. Right. Uh, in this process, what we realized, and because we also started to study a lot about aging biology, and we saw so much going on on this, you know, the science of longevity, uh, senescent cells were getting a a lot of attention, you know, in the past five years, um, mainly because the, the mice data is super impressive, right? When you deplete mm -hmm. senescent cells from aged mice, you see that they can really rejuvenate, they develop less cancer, they grow fur again, they are more active. So we saw, wow, this seems a very interesting approach to reverse aging. Uh, why we don't develop a product that targets senescent cells in the skin? Because we saw that basically the, the skincare market or the skincare industry, they were not really absorbing, you know, these latest discoveries of, you know, reprogramming, age reversal, and, you know, kind of targeting the aging and it's at its source instead of, you know, just focusing on ameliorating the appearance that, yeah. you know, basically what like acids and, you know, products that uh, uh, peel off your skin or, you know, lasers, a lot of times you are just like inducing a cell renewal, but you are not really targeting what's driving aging at the first place. Right. Yeah. So, so we set out to find, you know, new molecules, new peptides that were able to decrease the accumulation of senescent cells in the skin 
And therefore, this could extend, you know, the youthfulness of the tissue, also the, you know, the function um, preserve, you know, the, the, this better appearance of the skin that we have, you know, when we are younger. Uh, so after, you know, a few years of research, it took us a few years to find this peptide OS1. Uh, we, we've done a lot of studies in terms of safety, in terms of, you know, uh, penetration, in terms of efficacy, uh, really understanding how it works, you know, at the cellular level. And then eventually we decided to develop our own product and sell it direct to consumers. But we usually say that in our essence, we are a longevity company. So even though we have this skincare product, uh, we were always focusing on, you know, targeting aging at the first place. And the, 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 the product was a result of, you know, finding a peptide that could manage, you know, aging at the, you know, at the cellular level. But this peptide can have applications beyond the skin. You know, we are already testing in other conditions. So skin is kind of the first, you know, tissue that we are targeting. That is, there is obviously, you know, a huge need and a huge demand for products that are really, you know, tackling skin aging or, you know, promoting skin rejuvenation without side effects and a lot of people are also looking for alternatives, you know, to retinols or, you know, yeah, some more invasive yeah. treatments. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, that's basically what we are doing right now in terms of developing this product and also bringing awareness that obviously we want to age and look, you know, great and look our best, but also skin is our largest organ. So mm -hmm skin has a very important role in our overall health. So it's not only about like treating your face and hack and, and hands, but it's treating your whole body, you know, preserving your skin health as a whole, you know, because this will impact your body's health as well. So great, uh, huge explanation, thank you. So are you saying that the, the peptide that you vice, well, I've got a few questions. Um, so the first question is, so are you saying that the peptide that you've isolated, the OS01 or OS10? Yeah. OS01? OS1. OS1. Um, is it, does it have systemic applications as well, do you think? Like, could it be used as a body cream? It's just that it would be pretty expensive as a body cream. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. So yeah. It, it definitely can have systemic application and can have, you know, beyond topical application it could be like eventually you know injectable it could be eventually you know oral that's something that we are developing in parallel but yes our, our second you know product is going to be like a body product we are now adjusting which concentration is still effective because since our body is more protected from the sunlight, our face mm. and hands, these areas, they are, you know, more, they suffer more from the damage of UV light. But because our body is more protected, we believe that we can have a lower concentration and still kind of, you know, preserve or promote the, the effect that we are seeing with the skin. But yes, definitely uh, it can be applied, you know, to your whole body. So I think some of our customers already do that. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. They do. yeah. They and, just have a bigger uh, budget than I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some people are like not, you know, um, they, are, they, they are not saving with anything related to the, those treatments. But uh, yeah, we want to make the second product definitely something that's affordable, like on this kind of the same range of price of our current product, because our goal is really to show how treating our skin, we can impact, you know, our body internally. So yeah. I don't, have you heard of this study from UCSF that they, uh, so they had this cream that was basically made of like some emollients that would create a physical barrier, uh, you know, on the skin when applied. And because of this physical barrier, it helped like preventing uh, basically, you know, leaking inflammation from the skin to your whole body. Because when the skin barriers breaks, this, you know, starts 
promote inflammation that can affect our internal body. Sure. And sure. they did this study where they treated, you know, all their uh, subjects, I think was on average like 60 years old. And after one month of applying the cream throughout their whole body, they measured the levels of cytokines in their blood. And they saw that they reduced the cytokines to levels of like younger people around 30 years just by treating with a topical cream. Wow. And that's what we want to do. What was in the, yeah, no kidding. What was in the topical cream? So theirs was like basically some lipids, some ceramides. So it's, these are things that helps like creating a physical barrier, but it's not really helping your body to rebuild your own you know, yeah. skin barrier. In our case, uh, we believe that, you know, by targeting, you know, this damaged aged cells from our tissues, these will definitely help you to rebuild or to strengthen your skin barrier. And these will have, you know, a more significant effect in kind of, you know, preventing this inflammation to uh, affect your body's levels of inflammation. So that's the study that we are gonna run as soon as we have, you know, this cream already developed. Uh, we are running a study similar to this one to measure the effect in our blood in terms of, you know, how it can lower our levels of inflammation, which are related with, you know, chronic diseases, right? Alzheimer's, cardiovascular everything. disease. Yeah, yeah pretty much there, everything. There are, yeah, there are several studies of people that, you know, that have uh, some psoriasis or eczema that because of, you know, those inflama the inflammation that comes from the skin, they have higher uh, chances of developing cardiovascular diseases. So there is already a connection and it makes sense that skin aging would also influence, you know, chronic disease, if you think of the, you know, the size of the skin, right, our largest organ, yeah. even if those levels of inflammation, they seem like very low, when it builds up, you know, because of your whole uh, body, it can really, you know, impact our, our, our overall health. So, yeah. well, well, it's interesting, because I've always thought as what's happening on the skin as an expression of what's happening in the body, right? When you have inflammation on the skin it's never really just about the skin yes it's yes always true there's always another process internally and it's a bit of a chicken or the egg mm -hmm. idea right um and i think it's a really interesting idea to to address the skin as its own point of entry or point of yeah uh initiation of inflammation as it were and i can only imagine you know with the past year with everybody using all these crazy detergents on their hands like antibacterials mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. anti like all this stuff on their hands like i think you know in a way staying home was better <laughs> just yeah <laughs> Just, I know. You know. Although I have a couple of, uh, you know, I have a friend who owns a great company called Living Libations and she works with a lot of essential oils and she had a couple of very nice hand sanitizing products that don't disrupt the barrier and are yeah, still skin, skin microbiome, right? Yeah. At least re have respect for the microbiome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I imagine that most of, you know, those det detergents, they are not respecting the, the skin microbiome. So yeah, that's yeah. something that, uh, I mean, as a consumer in general, right. Are we aware of that? You know, our body wash, our face wash, are we, you know, basically stripping out all of our, you know, good bacteria. That's definitely something that we needed to be aware of. Absolutely. So with OS1, were there, did you come across any other peptides while you were looking for this one? Like, do you think, in, this is your first product. Do you think in for, future formulas, you may be incorporating other synergistic peptides? Yeah. Like, you find anything along the way or like, oh, we need to get back to that. Oh, I need to get back to that. <laughs> Right. Yeah, that's, that's a great question because, so basically we started screening a library of uh, antimicrobial peptides. So uh, we have one of our collaborators, he's a professor in Brazil and he was researching antimicrobial peptides for a while. And he had this proprietary library that we decided to screen. So we started with like 200 peptides to basically, you know, try uh, like a free hypothesis uh, 
can some of this peptide have also an effect in senescent cells? Uh, and then we found that some had, and then we did a series of optimizations on the ones that we had until we got to 2OS1. So in total, we screened like more than a thousand of peptides. Wow. Uh, but we also screened, you know, to have a good benchmark of what was available in the market. Uh, we screened a lot of molecules that were already known to, you know, to decrease or or even like to address aging. So we tested, for example, um, metformin, we test rapamycin, we test NMN, we test NR, we tested um, some very classic senolytics like ABT. Um, and so when you say test, you were testing them topically? No, we were testing the skin. So we had oh, okay. like, we use, yeah, we use some different models to replicate, you know, an aged skin. One is to use cells from progeria donors, uh, you know, the disease that you you age like faster that affects mainly yeah. mainly kids. Yeah. So we use cells from uh, donors, you know, that, that suffer from progeria. We also induce um, senescence by exposing skin cells to UV radiation. Uh, and we can also treat with some um, some chemotherapies that also induce senescence. So basically, we have a mod different models that you know cells that are highly senescent, and we treat with those molecules to see which ones are really uh, decreasing the level of senescence. And then we found that the ones that worked in our hands. Uh, NMN and fisetin, they have like a, a reduction around 15 to 20%. And then we try to combine with our peptide to see if we would see a synergistic effect. We also tested D plus Q or the Zetinib and quercetin. Quercetin is now also a supplement that's known to target senescent cells. But when we combined with our peptide, we didn't see a synergistic effect. A lot of times only our peptide was better so we didn't find a molecule that would, you know, kind of improve the effect that we were already seeing. Uh, we also test like different combinations of hyaluronic acid because this obviously uh, is already used in cosmetics. Uh, but in the end, none of the, you know, we test other molecules that, yeah, basically um, improve other, other pathways related to sirtuins. But in the end, we didn't find anything that would, you know, justify to add another, you know, molecule, you know, in combination with our peptide. We are definitely always, you know, testing new molecules and testing these combinations because we do believe that, you know, in the future, we need to have different molecules targeting different pathways to really be able to mm -hmm. promote a significant effect uh, in aging. One of the molecules that we are interested in is also a molecule that's able to break down uh, basically, you know, the cross links in the collagen that, you know, cause, you know, make our skin more uh, sagging. Uh, so that's something that uh, we still don't have that molecule yet, but we are always on top of anything that's being developed to address, you know, this extracellular matrix. That's a very important, I would say, uh, area in promoting skin rejuvenation but uh, and yeah we were talking about you know the peptide the the copper peptide that's yeah. something that we need to test yet to, to make sure that you know maybe combining with ours we will also you know add some interesting effect but we have not tested that one yet and it will be blue <laughs> yeah, I will be blue, but there it's already used on skin products, right? Yeah. Maybe maybe the concentration is super low, or then doesn't get blue. Oh no, the 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 the, the products are all very blue, but oh, I see. Um, but the skin doesn't turn blue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the you know I think, but but, but when it's absorbed, uh, then it it's fine. It goes away. Yeah, like okay, I have okay, some. Yeah. I have a serum here, actually, which, and this isn't a very high concentration. You can see the blue. Oh, I see. Right? But if I put it on my skin and I rub it in, 
it won't make my skin blue. It just. It's just go away. Okay. Ah, I mean, that's okay. My lighting is kind of wonky, but there's no blue on my skin. <laughs> I remember someone that was testing uh, fisetin. Have you heard of fisetin? Yeah, yeah, no, it's yeah. a great, great compound because it's uh, it's important for NAD um, metabolism, right? Also, yeah, it's a, it, it, it's it's like also ways yeah and, yeah it's all, it's a, it's like a flavonoid and was found like to also uh, address you know the accumulation of senescent cells and some people start like mixing you know, their creams, but it's orange. It's, so, does it so turn people, people get, orange? Yeah. Oh, oh you're kidding. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So you get to look youthful and like a pumpkin. So, yes, exactly. <laughs> Not a good combination. So, what did you find? I'm curious about NMN because there are, there is a, there is a skin product that has NAD or NMN in it. What did you find? What What were your findings when you tested it? Yeah, so we tested only applying direct to the, the fibroblast, so only the cells itself. We didn't put on a cream to see, you know, how it would work, if it would absorb. Um, a lot of those molecules, they tend to be very, you know, unstable. So we need also always to make sure that these molecules would be, you know, still effective in a cream, you know, on, on a yeah. formulation. So we didn't get to test that. But uh, basically, we, we wanted to make sure that our peptide was, you know, performing better or similar. In this case, was better than, you know, the molecules that were already available. And, and I, using a peptide made more sense in terms of we could guarantee the stability. We did tests mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, um, yeah, how long after, you know, different pHs, you know, after, after one month, after two months, the peptide will, would still be intact, would still be able to penetrate the skin. So we ended up not using those molecules, but at least we could confirm that they did have an effect, you know, also addressing one of, you know, the main hallmarks of aging, that's the level of senescent cells. So yeah, so you're very focused on senescence. So let's talk a little bit about the effect of senescent cells on the appearance of skin. Mm -hmm. so that in your papers on your website, you're talking about how it re it, it restores the the thickness of skin in a way. Like the, you you have a really interesting diagram that shows that older skin it it kind of collapses on itself a little bit. You yeah. don't have the distinct layers anymore, and yet after applying the OS1, it seems to restore that that thickness, which I guess is what allows the, the wrinkles to sort of hopefully be less visible. But there's that yeah. cross-linking thing is still a big deal, but but maybe yeah, so we, about how to why, you know, why is senescence cellular senescence so important to how the skin looks? Yeah. So let, let's think in two layers uh, individually. One is the derms, that's the area that the, the layer that has collagen and fibroblasts, and then we have the epidermal layer that, you know, um, forms the, the skin barrier. Uh, so at the derms, the fibroblasts are definitely, you know, secreting collagen or secreting proteins that degrades collagen. When we have senescent cells in the derms, what we see is that uh, one senescent cell can start secreting like inflammatory signals yeah. that will induce other cells around to become senescent, like we call like the the bad apple effect, you know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it'll spoil the whole crop. Yeah. No, yes. So if you can, you know, if you can remove that senescent cell or prevent that senescent cell to, you know, to get formed in the first place, you keep your tissue with like healthy levels of, uh, you know, uh, production of collagen and, and, you know, extracellular matrix remodeling that's lost when you start having senescent cells because then you have more collagen degradation, inflammation, and this leads to a cascade of, you know, aging effects that we don't want. So in the derms, that's the mainly effect. Senescent cells will induce more collagen degradation based on the CESP. That's like the factors that those senescent cells secrete. 
On the epidermal layer, the epidermal layer, we have stem cells on the basal layer. That's kind of the bottom of the layer. Yeah. Uh, so the, the epidermis has a lot of different layers that will uh, basically the cells are dividing and it forms like the, a very nice and, and tall layer of cells. And when you have senescent cells, basically uh, you induce the stem cells that are in the basal layer to become senescent so they can't replicate to reproduce or to, re to replace the cells that are being renewed on the upper layer. So that's yeah. why the skin gets thinner because even if your external stimuli is inducing your cells to renew, you don't have like stem cells that will, you know, replace the cells that are being uh, renewed. So that's why with time you get, because senescent, the stem cells go into senescence earlier than they should, or they right, shouldn't right, even right. go to senescence. So by, by preventing, you know, senescent cells to be accumulated in the epidermal layer, you allow the stem cells to replicate and again, to, um, to replace the damaged cells that are being renewed over time. And so you would say that, so therefore we could say that you using, oh, so how long does it take to start to see that effect? Because I'm like, okay, so I'm three weeks in. Would I see a much different effect if I kept going for two months or three months? Because we were talking about this earlier, right? I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, like I'm 57, I was a lifeguard. I've done a certain amount of damage to my face, right? So, um, so how much ground do you think or have you seen someone who is a little bit older can reclaim and postmenopausal, like, you know, like... Yeah. Even with the, the hormone replace, like BHRT, which helps because it restores estrogen levels where they need to right. be. But how much ground can we reclaim as, if we're older? Because I'm, I'm getting the feeling that this is, I mean, it's, it's a great product, but it would also be a very good product for women in their thirties to start using yeah. early in the game. But let's talk about us first, or me, <laughs> not you. You're probably closer to 35. You're like, if, you're, even, if you're even 35 yet, but. Like, I am 35, exactly. Okay. Well, good. Usually, I don't think you're 35. I'm, I say, I, I, usually I say that I'm 53 and then, you know, I'm using my product. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. <laughs> But yeah, so in the lab, um, we get to test skins that are, you know, from a variety of ages, like ranging from 30s to 40s, 50s, 70s, 80s. And we can clearly see, you know, whatever age, I remember one very good experiment with a skin of a 76 year old donor that, you know, after five days, we already see an improvement in the skin barrier and the thickness of the skin in vitro in the lab, right? Yeah. So there's um, no salt there, like there's no pollution, like... Yeah, yeah, it's a very controlled yeah. kind of, you know, system. So with people, uh, so our product, you know, besides our peptide, we have three sides of hyaluronic acid that should, you know, some of them will penetrate and you have like a biological function of, you know, stimulating your skin to produce more hyaluronic acid. So some people already start seeing uh, results from the, you know, early days because the hyaluronic acid already helps with the hydration and, you know, helping your skin, you know, to get more plump. Uh, and then in the long term, the peptide will start penetrating and we start again um, changing, you know, this makeup of the skin that takes a little bit more time. Mm -hmm. from, from our clinical studies, after six weeks, we already measured uh, an improvement of around 15% in the skin barrier. Uh, and then we saw also improvement in other markers or related to elasticity, firmness, um, overall texture and appearance. And after 12 weeks, we see that those uh, parameters, they, they continue to get improved. So I'm using this product, you know, for almost two years because we are using since the first formulation. Of course. And, uh, <laughs> 
And I can definitely see that over time, uh, it keeps getting better in terms of, I feel my skin much healthier in general, but also like uh, more plump and, you know, super soft. It's just like, everything's more like uh, uh, on a balanced kind of state, you know, before I had like very uneven tone and a lot of things. So, as we usually say, aging is the default, right? So <laughs> we always need to keep using things that will allow us to basically counteract, you know, the, the, the negative sign, signs of aging. So it's something that we recommend to continue using. Uh, some people will add other products on top. Some people will be, you know, satisfied just with one product. But uh, yeah. Uh, so it, I don't have like a clear answer. I, I can, from our clinical studies after six and 12 weeks, we already have significant improvements, you know. Okay. Uh, and the average age from our clinical study was 59. So it was. Okay. So you were, so you were playing fair. You were, you were looking yeah, at yeah. your skin. Yeah. <laughs> and even in our site, uh, we have like before and after it's yeah. from that clinical study. So these are from, you know, actual older. People. Older. Yeah, actual people. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that's amazing. So, and now, so about using other product with the OS one. So I was a little bit confused because I, you know, for me, I was like, okay, I don't want anything to mix with it. I'm just going to put this. On. Yeah. <laughs> and then I thought, okay, but I've got this hyaluron hyaluronic acid cream. Mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, and hyaluronic acid, it sounds like acid, like, but it's actually, as you said, it's very hydrating. So yeah. I've mixed it. I've, I've applied over, like I will let it dry and then I will mm -hmm. use either a hyaluronic acid or I'll use a copper peptide cream. Mm -hmm. um, another, like a really nice formulation that actually has vitamin D in it as well. Oh, interesting. And, uh, which is, again, it's like, it, it's this interesting from the, which, we focus so much on the inside out, which makes all the sense in the world because yeah, everything that's going out on the inside is going to happen on the outside. But when, but I'm starting to see that in more advanced skincare, we're also taking this outside in yeah. approach, right? And, and yeah. really, as you were saying, it's not just what sits on the skin, but what's actually going to get in there and affect the skin at a cellular level. And, mm -hmm. you know, and we were talking earlier about this copper peptide, like, would it be interesting to see because it, it is really very, it has so many different effects at a dermal, like to on mm -hmm. the skin and on the fibroblasts and on collagen, um, yeah. on so many different aspects of skin. It would be really interesting for you guys to look at it, you know, in terms of what pathways it's affecting and could there be synergy with, yeah. with OS1. Uh, but the other compound that, you know, so there's two other compounds that I will open up capsules and dump into my face cream. One of them is spermidine, which we talked about before, which I think, again, because it's a compound that seems to affect sen cellular senescence, it mm -hmm. upregulates autophagy, it, mm -hmm. you know, it protects DNA, it addresses misfolded proteins. So, I think it goes after now when, when we started talking about it eight months ago, it was five hallmarks of aging. Now it's seven. Again, it would be a, a, it's so interesting to see the synergies if there are any with, with something like your product. But then the other one that I tried was the melatonin, which we talked about, <laughs> which don't try this at home folks. And if you do use very, very little. <laughs> I love that story. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I watched this. I'm just going to tell the audience what I did. So I watched this really interesting presentation by Dr. Thierry Hertog, who's a, a, a functional medicine doctor, really, really smart guy in Belgium. And uh, he was talking about all the different ways to use melatonin. And one of them being that it is, it has applications topically, both for skin anti-aging as an anti-aging skin product and for regrowing hair. And now he did say that it was a very low concentration. It was either 0.1% or 0.3%. I couldn't exactly remember which it was. Uh -huh. It was also about to go to bed. I wasn't exactly sitting there with like a like molar scale trying to measure. So I just put a little bit of melatonin powder in my hand and I mixed it with my cream and I put it on my face. 
And I literally couldn't wake up the next day. Like I was, I was a zombie all day. <laughs> so, <laughs> so guys, if you're going to try melatonin topically, whether it's with your OS one or anything else, go with a light hand because yeah. <laughs> apparently it is absorbed through the skin and will affect you like from a, I had a great sleep. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and that's so interesting, right? Because how the skin is connected to our, our body. And I mean, that's a very clear proof of that, right? Yeah. So yeah. that's why we called our, our product a topical supplement because everyone is taking supplements, you know, to keep our bodies health. But how about treating our largest organ? So oh my yeah, God. That, yeah. Well, and we need that largest organ, as you said, you know, both from a health and a functionality perspective. And, right. and as we said earlier, you know, as, as, uh, as health span increases, um, you know, lifespan increases, we want our health span, but maybe we want our aesthetic span to go with it. Yeah. It's skin span. <laughs> exactly. Skin span, what you were talking about. So also I wanted to ask you about the biological age of the skin. So you are able to measure the DNA methylation at a tissue level of specifically skin tissue and the telomeres. So would you be able to do that of a person or would you have to take a skin biopsy to do that? Like how does yeah. that, that would yeah, be unpleasant because then you'd end up with a scar, which would be unfortunate. <laughs> I know that that's the challenge. Uh, so we did develop this uh, algorithm to measure the efficacy of our product. So in the lab, we use the skin biopsies and, you know, that's okay because we get like leftover of skin from plastic surgeries. Um, but from people, that's a challenge. We are running now a clinical study where uh, people are testing our product, you know, for six months up to a year. Mm -hmm. We're going to measure the first data point uh, after six months. And they are using on the outer arm because then we can get a biopsy from the outer arm to make sure to measure, you know, the change yeah. in the skin biological age. We are also in collaboration with another company that's trying to develop a method that's not super invasive. You know, it would be like a tape strip that would get, you know, at least some cells from the epidermis. Uh, that we could measure and we could make this more like consumer friendly, you know, to sell mm -hmm. to people that are using uh, the product. This is still like being developed. So we don't have that data yet, but I, I, we want at least with this clinical study to make sure that we can, with a product, you know, change your skin biological age. That would be a, already like a, first time ever that we can prove this because yeah you can see you probably can see this everywhere like on the products claims right but no one has ever you know measured you know change in their skin biological age well I don't think anybody makes that claim on their product because it's not on anybody's radar like you know like I'm I'm just joining a clinical trial to see if my biological age my systemic biological age can be reversed using these bioregulator peptides Nice. Um, yeah. And, and measuring telomere, telomeres and also DNA uh -huh. methylation, but it's not, it's not at a tissue level, like a tissue or organ level, because to yeah. you, you have to biopsy the heart and the lungs and the liver, and that's unpleasant and that's not going to happen just yet. So. Yeah. But I mean, to have like a general sense of your body's biological age, I think, you know, blood, it, it's fine. Um, but again, it, Skin is a little bit uh, different because the skin is more exposed, right, to yeah. the environment. So it would be more precise if we can get a piece of our skin or if we can get a sample of our, of our skin. Even because when Harvard, um, when he developed his algorithm with the pen tissue that was basically combining all tissues and using one algorithm to measure everything, the skin was the tissue that was most uh, the alignment was not good. So we do, we did see that we needed a, a, a measurement specific for the skin because it's a oh, tissue okay. that it's, uh, it behaves differently from, you know, the rest of our organs. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I think that, you know, to have a good sense of how your biological age is compared to your chronological age, Definitely, you know, blood makes sense. And then we evolve to be able to assess 
skin biological age as well. Yeah, no, that's I I like the tape method. That sounds good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that sounds like that. that sign me up for that one. I'm all in. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so what else? Like when it, so with with your, do you have any opinions in terms of? things that people should be eating or other things they should do to take care of their skin. Like, so we've got this OS one, so we're addressing cellular senescence of the skin, which is, you know, it's a new concept for a lot of people. You actually compared it to something like rapamycin, which people understand or at least certain people in certain circles with rapamycin, we have to be very careful, right? Because you want to pulse it because you don't want to always keep that going. But with OS one, I think that, what you you said earlier is it is something you can use consistently yeah. like it doesn't have that kind of double-edged sword effect that that things like that the stronger senolytics might have yeah what what with rapamycin what we see is that uh, you know at higher concentration you can induce like immunosuppression right and you don't want to immunosuppress Not unless big. you are you, you need you need that yeah. right yeah And our peptide, we already test like in super high concentrations and we don't see, you know, that effect. We also don't see a toxic effect. So, and also we are not delivering a super high concentration. Uh, The the concentration that's penetrating the skin, it's a very safe and, you know, still effective, but uh, it's still within a range of concentration that's super, safe wouldn't cause any any side effects so that's the main thing of our peptide the, the safety it's so uh, good that that that's why we want to explore you know probably uh, applying or you know um, administering like systemically because we believe that this can help you know eventually our internal organs as well for so, sure well, yeah, because yeah. there's the, the, the integrity of tissue has to do with a lot of the same things as integrity of skin. So yeah. is it a naturally occurring peptide in the human body? Because a lot of these compounds, like, you know, we were talking about spermidine earlier or some of these other peptides like GHKCU or BPC-157, like these are all, these are all peptides that are in some way, shape or form can be found naturally, but their levels may decrease as we age or things like yeah. that. Is OS1 a peptide that is naturally found in the body at all? It, it, the, 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 the sequence itself, it's, we didn't find like a full alignment or you know, a full similarity with any other protein. Uh, we, did found, uh, we did find 70% similarity with other prote- proteins in our bodies. So it's not a hundred percent, you know, natural from our body, but yeah. it's also very similar to some proteins that are in our body. We are now testing a smaller version of five peptides, and we need to check again if that sequence it's it's similar to. I believe the the five peptide would be would be already, you know, found in in other proteins of our body. Right. Yeah. Right. Because the OS one is ten amino acids. You said. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, and we are testing five amino acids now. Yeah, and five amino, and it's interesting because we certainly in the peptide world with the bioregulators that are very powerful, um, even something like a GHK, like these are two, three, four amino acid chain. And it seems that the smaller they are, the pow- more powerful they become. And, you know, as you said, possibly because they can get places, they can, they'll fit into different types of receptors and initiate different yeah. cascades of effect in, in systemically. Yeah. And also because they are more stable, usually, you know, larger peptides, they tend to be cleaved by, you know, yeah. peptide, pepti- peptases. Peptidases. Yeah. Peptidases. <laughs> I got you. Yeah. yeah. They're digestible. And the smaller ones yeah. are much stronger, right? They don't get yeah. broken down. Exactly. So that's why they can have, you know, this variety of effects. You know, they can bind to different receptors or di- different proteins and have, you know, uh, a wider range of biological functions. Cool. That's amazing. So, okay. So let's, we're going to wind it down in a few minutes, but let's, um, are there, 
is there anything else you want to share about best ways to use your product? Are there people that will do better with it than others? Are there like, is there anything that people should know specific about one skin? Um, I think, uh, well, in terms of I, our product can def, we, we try to create a product that could be, you know, um, useful for everyone you know you could start at your early 20s because as you were saying if you want to do something to prevent you know healthier skins to be you know healthy and functional and you know be able to repair damage before the damage accumulates it's easier to you know later to reverse damage that's already accumulated so and also the the formula is very light and absorb super well so mm. it should be okay for people that have like oily or sensitive skin uh, a lot of people have already reported that has helped with other conditions such as eczema rosacea um, minimizing scars uh, from acne and you know making your skin more even or also helping with hyperpigmentation. So a lot of those, I would say problems that comes or that, you know, increases with aging, our product can also help because, you know, uh, in the essence we are addressing aging, you know, itself yeah. and anything that's related to aging, we can potentially help. Something that we are interested now is in hair loss, but we still need to, to test that. Uh, but yeah, so in terms of how to use, uh, we recommend just like, you know, cleanse your skin with whatever cleanse, uh, cleanser you're already using. Try to, again, not use those cl cleansers that has a lot of detergents, you know, try to yeah. have one that's very uh, microbiome friendly and then apply our product on a, you know, clean skin. And it's always better to apply our product first to make sure that, uh, you know, we're getting the best absorption of the product and the peptides. And then you can layer with other products if you feel that your skin needs more hydration uh, or if you wanna, you know, add a different active that, you know, sometimes our product doesn't have like vitamin C or vitamin D. So yeah. uh, you can layer on top. And uh, yeah, and it's, it's very basic. It's, it's very simple, like for people that uh, are looking for a more minimalist kind of, you know, skincare routine, this could be like your one product, you know, all in one. Yeah. Uh, for men, I think this is great. You know, first timers, men that also need to take care of their skin, right? Think, it's not- I think they're starting to figure it out. I mean, yeah, not, yeah. It depends on I, the guy, but they're thinking- well, they're from, I think from our, you know, uh, base of customers, almost 25% are men, what's very, really? I would say, high for, you know, a skincare product. And if you read the reviews, I love because they, they like leaving the reviews. I hope me and my wife, we start to use this, <laughs> but he's writing, he's the one writing, you know. <laughs> love it. It's awesome. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's about aging. It's about, you know, uh, really doing whatever we can to age our best. So mm. I, 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 we shouldn't, you know, have any, I would say, bias or, you know, pride about, you know, skincare. It's only for women. I think that's something, you know, from the past. So, yeah, let's well, and especially, all... especially with your approach of approaching the skin as a point of entry for inflammation and, that this product, yes, it affects the, the, the way the skin looks because of its mechanism of action, but ultimately it's an, it's an, it's a longevity product. Like it's not, yeah. I don't want to say it's not just a skin cream, but it's not just a skin cream. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> actually, I will say from a texture perspective, it's beautiful. Like it's a really nice, like you said, it's very light, it's very absorbable, and it's hydrating at the same time. It, yeah. I actually yeah. found it surprising because I find quite often, again, probably because of my age, I find that mm -hmm. quite often a cream might not be rich enough, so it leaves right. me feeling dry anyway. And I would not need to put anything mm -hmm. else on top. Mm -hmm. So yes. it's, uh, I'm actually looking forward to see what happens over more time because 
Like I said, I think that things like sun damage, like the spots that will take longer than three weeks because you have yeah. to get down at that melanocyte level. Right. Yeah. And, it yeah, does, right. and it does do that. It talks about the melanocyte level on your. In yeah. Your- we had a very interesting data showing that it, it decreased the activity of you know, tyrosinase. That's the enzyme related to the production of melanin. Uh, so we, it was, again, was not designed for that, but we have a lot of data showing that helps with like, you know, hyperpigmentation or uneven pigmentation, uh, mainly caused, you know, by sun damage. Now, another thing that, you know, some people report, um, that they do is like micro needling because also helps to penetrate a little bit more. It's, it's a little more like, uh, you know, yeah. Not everybody. It's funny. I, I mean, I, I've done it a couple of times, but I know a couple of people in the aesthetics world who believe it's the worst thing you can do. (laughs) Oh, really? (laughs) And especially the home ones because they tear the skin. Like I think it's a little bit what you were talking about before where it's, um, it, it creates damage and it's micro damage. And so yeah. admittedly it would help things to penetrate more. I mean, you're breaking the skin, right? Yeah. Um, but, but there are a number of people that I've spoken to over the last year or so who you talk to them about microneedling and they're just like, yeah. no, <laughs> not, not a good idea. So it's, it's so I think it's in the world, it's there's two schools of thoughts in that area. Right. But yeah, it, there is definitely, yeah. I would say that the microneedling, you know, from it at least is like a physical damage, it's not chemical damage because right. a lot of right. So, I mean, depend if it's very sparse, if it's like you know every two months or whatever, uh, and you are not, you know, because you can't induce a lot of inflammation in your skin, you know, too often. That's when it builds mm-hmm. up, and really in the long term is bad for you. From you know very you know, time to time, eventually, it, yeah, it's some people have done it and some people like like the results. But again, sure. we need more data for the long term, right? It's just the, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying yeah. like there seems to be two, two camps on this front. And because yeah. I know a lot of people who swear by microneedling and, and you know, and I will also use red light therapy at like yes. photobiomodulation, which is another great way to upregulate. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it would be interesting to see does putting on OS1 and do photobiomodulation right after, would that have a potentiating effect with the peptide in terms of what it's doing? It's so many yeah. experiments to run. I know. <laughs> yeah. With red light. Yeah. There are so many things that we need to test in combination, but I mean, uh, Apparently, they are targeting, you know, different mechanisms. So I can only imagine that they would be, you know, complementary and they would work like synergistically. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. I'm for sure. Okay. Well, this has been amazing. This has been most educational. (laughs) Miss Catalina, is there anything else we should know? Anything else you'd like to leave our audience with? You have you have more products coming down the pipes. Like, well, you do yeah. body cream, which I can't wait to get personally. Yeah, again, we uh, definitely we as we were saying, we are targeting. You know, we are promoting skin health. So this means your whole body skin. So these products it makes so much sense and even from our customers, I love our customers because they are so much into longevity. We do some like customer surveys and they are like into all the supplements and they are asking for that body cream, you know? Yeah. Uh, So it's coming because we really want to, you know, cover your whole body and, you know, make sure that we are doing our best on treating our skin and, you know, helping our body as a whole to, to age or to protect from aging and yeah, I think we covered most of it. I, I, I really enjoyed this conversation. I love, you know, we cover like peptides, we cover like epigenetics and reversing biological age. I think these are very interesting times for us to, you know, be experiencing and developing and, you know, kind yeah. of impacting our lives so much. So 
I, I just thought of another question. Yeah, let's go. I, I know it's like when you're four years old and your parents say you're leaving and you're standing at the door in your snowsuit and there's one more thing. <laughs> just one more question. Have you done any work or any research or is there any information or pathways in which it might help or interact or is it a completely different thing than people who might have skin cancer? Well, there again, any, no, I mean, we're not, pre, not anything, but yeah. I know that, like there's a study that just came out that said melanotan two, which is another peptide. It's an alpha MSH agonist topically seems to be helpful with melanoma, but I'm just wondering, OS1, I'm sh- like, you guys are researchers for sure. You've asked that question. <laughs> I don't know if you've answered so, it. Yeah, obviously we can't uh, claim anything. And even we have tests like once the cancer is already established, uh, we don't see that our peptide reduces the proliferation or increases the proliferation. What do we have? uh, Well, in terms of data, uh, we know that, you know, sun damage is one of the main drivers of skin cancer, right? And one of our most significant data is really the, you know, the increase of our cells ability to repair some damage, you know, after using the product. So by, you know, repairing and using this product, you can prevent, hopefully you can prevent skin cancer. Some people that uh, they need, they have like some patch of, you know, uh, skin cell carcinoma, Oh, like the need. basal cell, the basal yes. cell carcinoma, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. basal cell. They have reported that they needed to go to the dermatologist to kind of, you know, rip it off or kind of uh, uh, every six months. And after using this product, they spend like a year or more without going to the, you know, to do this kind of treatment. Really? So it, it, it because it helps like, you know, make your skin stronger in general, and you know, the skin barrier is stronger, your skin is functioning, you know, better. We we believe that can help like bringing the, or maintaining the homeostasis of the skin. Uh, obviously like, this is like one or two people that have reported that. So we needed right. to kind of follow up on that. But again, everything that keeps your skin functioning well and you know, healthy for longer, should, you know, help preventing or, you know, maybe slowing down or reversing some of those conditions. Yeah, well, well, definitely on the the sun damage, we do believe that we can help a lot of people that, you know, for sure, prevent sun damage. Some people like from Australia that they are, you know, they grew up like playing tennis and they, they suffer a lot of sun damage. Now they are, you know, buying our products because they, they see that our product can help them. So that's a pretty big testimonial right there. I'm going to have to get some to my dad. Okay. That was the last question. Promise. Thank you so much. (laughs) Thank you, Natalie. This was great. You want to share? And where people can find you, how to buy the product. That was the last thing we have to say. How do people find Carolina? And also how do they buy OneSkin? Uh, so I'm on the social media. Uh, if you guys go to our site, uh, we have a bios page and then you can find my link to LinkedIn. Um, also on Instagram, or you can also add my handles here uh, on the. I will. I'll put them in the show yeah. notes. So make sure you yeah. send them to me. So it's oneskin.co, right? Co. Yeah. yeah, the website is oneskin.co. Uh, you, I also recommend everyone to subscribe to our newsletter because we are constantly sharing data behind the products. Uh, also, obviously, you know, new products that are coming up and, you know, a lot of educational content in general related to longevity, not only to skin. So please subscribe. Also subscribe to get our products. We are already shipping to Canada. So oh, I know good. that's amazing. <laughs> And guys, you can also use promo code superhuman1515 and save 15% off your purchase Yay. and get a better deal. Yay. <laughs> well, Carolina, thank you again. Uh, this was a pleasure. And I look forward to speaking to you when you have more new amazing products to share. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me, Natalie. Thanks. 
Thanks so much for joining me on this episode of the Biohacking Superhuman Performance Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please remember to leave us a five-star review on iTunes because that's what helps us to be heard and to be seen. If you'd like to connect with me directly, or if you'd like to leave any comments, or if you have any questions about this episode, please reach out to me directly through my website, mattnidham.com. And of course, if you're not already a member of the Biohacking Superhuman Performance Community on Facebook, that's where you'll find me every day. It's a short application. Just answer a couple of questions and you're in and interfacing with other amazing biohackers. Thanks again, and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next episode.